Hello everyone and welcome back to the SN series. My name is George and I'm a fine year medical student. And today I'm going to discuss how I approach each of the subjects that is physics, chemistry and biology. First thing for all the subjects, this was the same mechanism I went. I would read the NCRT, then I would go through the class notes, the lecture class I went through those class notes. Then I used to solve MCQs on that. Then we had a test at the end of the week. So I used to write the test then make corrections to myself. So that was the pattern I followed because uh, where I went, I went for Berlin Study Center for Allah for coaching. So we had weekly tests and there was specific syllabus for that. So you should study each week topics accordingly and went in that flow itself. Or you could make a plan for yourself and plan like that. So a test at the end of the week could help you assess your preparation. So this was my way of learning. While solving MCQs definitely will make a lot of mistakes. So what to do? First thing, if it's an extra concept or extra point, definitely add it to your main notes. Your class notes should have everything. So that should be a ready reckoner. So write everything in there, those important points only. And then what you could do is take that MCQ number and page number and write it in your MCQ logbook. So have an MCQ logbook for physics, chemistry and biology. So you can write all the MCQs which have made mistakes in. So during revision, you only need to do that. Please understand during re revision, you need to repeat and resolve the MCQs. So to solve from the starting first to last question will be really tough if you open an MCQ book again. So it will be better if you can solve only those questions which have made mistake. So make a logbook would be helpful, I feel. Or another option is you could circle in those books, but I prefer a logbook. Book. I use that. Uh, then chemistry was one of the most difficult subjects for me. Reason being, there were a lot of reactions to remember the periodic table and inorganic chemistry. Don't talk to me about it. It was very tough for me, especially when I was in 12th grade and 11th grade. I really didn't like the subject, and you know, we can pass with you know, we can pass the board exams with the learning stuff, but for entrance exam, you need to get that concept and all, which is very poor for me, uh, especially in organic chemistry. So but soon I started liking that. How? If you ask me, it was a way of making mnemonics and stories. So the periodic table, I learned the whole periodic table via stories. I guess the first 30 I learned in school itself. So I had a little beggar boy, could not offer flower, never named MG, all silicon pens, suffer, clever army kill captain. Then, then there were 10 more, I forgot that. Uh, so like that. And uh, I, may, I le learned the whole periodic table. I made stories with my friends and all. So I can't like my roommates, I put their names in that and like that, I study the whole thing. My suggestion is you yourself should make the mnemonics, okay? You might have to spend some time, but that'll be really useful. Like when I got the paper, when I got the niche paper, the first thing I did was I wrote down the entire periodic table quickly because lots of inorganic chemistry questions were there. So I could just open, check the periodic table, write the answer, which was easier than I have to think in my brain, oh, what to do, what to do. So this was a really very good strategy and that's how I managed chemistry. So mnemonics and all those things were really helpful for me in chemistry. Another way of making mnemonics, suppose if you have learned a list, you know, right? So I'll just tell again, you can take the first letter of each word in that list and then uh, make it them into a mnemonic or acronym or even songs. I used to make songs also. You know, I was so weird. You can understand how weird I was. I used to do all these sorts of things to get stuff into my head because I feel I have a very bad memory, I guess. I'm not sure. But I do. I did all these stuff and that's how I was able to make these difficult things easier. Physics is basically a problem-based subject. So do, do, do maximum problems, get your concepts right. When you do more problems, you get more concepts. So don't spend your time, waste your time reading textbooks. Textbooks are important, read once, that's enough. Get the points on a paper, that's enough. Don't reread the textbook, do questions and get your concepts right. Chemistry, what you have to do is, again, lots of questions you have to do. It's like biology also, maybe, you know, there are a lot of concepts uh, like theory based things. So reread, read, make these mnemonics and all and study. Biology, you know what to do. You have to learn the theory, you have to learn it. There's no other option. NCRT is must, 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 okay? One more thing many people ask is, uh, how to go about those extra points, those things that are not in NCRT in all the three subjects. Let me tell you, those extra points are important, but there's a limit also. That is why I tell you, you ask your faculties or your teachers what they teach you. So they'll be only teaching the most significant extra points and you can check those extra points which have come in the previous years in the exams. So just study all those points itself. Don't, because if you want to study extra, there is no limit. But 
you can find the limit the borders to your extra information by checking previous papers and following what the teacher said so learn only those significant extra stuff because i feel that is important for helping you to get a better rank okay a higher rank will get you know increase your chances of getting into a better college so definitely learn those extra stuff which is needed only that's it okay if you find it useful do like the video and do subscribe for more such content definitely suggest it to your friends and other new media friends all the best